and always fall back to the evidence that California has some of the strongest gun safety laws in the nation. That this bill would ban weapons that are in common use in the United States today. That is reason for hope. Is it the most robust, far-reaching gun law in the history of the world? It is not. Also, this bill was written with constitutionality in mind, so I definitely had a good feeling. Rights advocates say this is a victory, while many Democratic state leaders see this as a mistake. Judge Benitez's ruling won't go into effect for another 30 days. Important update on the California rifle ban case Miller versus Bonta. The N Circuit is fighting the Supreme Court once more in an effort to preserve the rifle ban. Legal Developments The U.S. Federal Appeals Court has determined that California's law, which forbids the carrying of arms in the majority of public areas, is lawful. The Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals lifted the injunction that had been granted on December 20 by a judge who found that the statute infringed upon residents' Second Amendment rights to keep and bear arms. The rule was meant to take effect at the start of 2024, but it was delayed after the conservative majority U.S. Supreme Court issued a historic decision in June 2022 that increased arm rights across the country. Senate Bill 2, the law, forbade anyone from carrying concealed weapons in 26 California-sensitive places, such as zoos, parks, stadiums, hospitals, and houses of worship. It also forbade anyone from carrying concealed weapons inside privately owned businesses that were accessible to the public, unless the owner had put up a notice allowing license holders to carry weapons on their property. Lawsuits against the new law were brought by groups that support arm rights, including the California Rifle and Pistol Association, Arm Owners of America, and the Second Amendment Foundation, alleging constitutional violations. Judge Cormac Carney of the U.S. District Court agreed with the ruling and halted the act pending the resolution of the dispute. Rob Bonta, the California Attorney General, asked the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals to stay the order until an appeal could be filed, arguing that keeping the law blocked would place tens of millions of Californians facing a heightened risk of armed crime. Legal challenges have also been made against legislation of a similar nature that was enacted by other states. In conclusion, the U.S. Supreme Court has decided that California's law forbidding the carrying of arms in public areas is valid in the case of New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin. A federal judge has declared that California's weapons ban, which has been in effect for 30 years, is unreasonable. It's attempts to stop the sale of semi-auto weapons, according to Judge Roger Benitez of the United States District Court for the District of San Diego, are a violation of the state's constitution's guarantee of the right to bear arms. And always fall back to the evidence that California has some of the strongest gun safety laws in the nation. Change that occurred with the court ruling on New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin. A case to be brought to go in front of one of those judges and to have an outcome similar to what we've seen in the past, um, we have to be ready for that. For me, every single day that this um, ban is in place, I know that, the, that it's saving lives. We have one of the lowest firearm mortality rates in the nation because we have some of the strongest gun laws in the nation. It is causal. People thought that the federal government would never get, be able to get a gun law bill passed again. They got one done in the last year. Benitez conceded that although law-abiding citizens who feel they need weapons for self-defense also commonly possess strong weapons like AR-15 rifles, criminals also use them. Referring to the state's attack weapon ban as a failed experiment, the judge's ruling was essentially the same as the one from 2021. He has routinely overruled several arm-related laws in the state of California, and he recently rendered an opinion declaring that the state cannot forbid arm owners from owning detachable mags that hold more than 10 rounds. According to Benitez's most recent ruling, several state laws pertaining to attack weapons will be repealed. According to Rob Bonta, the state's attorney general, weapons of war have no place on the streets of California. Until further notice, it is still unlawful to purchase, trade, or possess attack weapons in the state of California. John Dillon, an attorney representing the plaintiffs who brought a case to overturn the act, said he was happy with the judge's ruling. The court's conclusion, he claimed, is sound constitutionally and resolves the numerous shortcomings of the state's arguments and purported explanations 
for this unlawful prohibition. Although Bonta had appealed the judge's 2021 ruling, the U.S. Supreme Court issued a ruling in a New York case that set a new standard for how courts should evaluate arm laws before the Ninth Circuit could rule on the case. Comparing the AR-15 to Bowie knives, Benitez came to the conclusion that the prohibition was unconstitutional and that banning attack weapons would further the state's important public safety interests. The California Gun Rights Foundation, the Second Amendment Foundation, the San Diego County Gun Owners Political Action Committee, and the Arms Policy Coalition filed this lawsuit, one of many that have been brought by pro-arm groups contesting the state of California's extremely strict arm laws. A measure that would have prohibited the sale of semi-auto attack-style rifles and large-capacity mags in Illinois beginning the following year has been rejected by the U.S. Supreme Court. An arms dealer who had lost a prior attempt to reach the Supreme Court and an organization that supported arm rights filed an emergency application, which the court refused without explanation. A Naperville law that forbade the sale of attack rifles was also challenged, with the argument that it was unconstitutional under the Second Amendment. Proponents of the right to bear arms are seeking to expand on the 2022 ruling of the Supreme Court, which established a strict new procedure for assessing restrictions and proclaimed a constitutional right to bear arms. The conservative majority of the court ruled that those arguing for more stringent arm laws needed to provide evidence of prior restrictions of a similar kind. Legal Battles Over Illinois Arm Laws Illinois law permits people to keep the arms they now own, but it will forbid the ownership of brand new attack weapons as of the next year. In response to a plea from the National Association for Gun Rights and weapons dealer Robert Bevis, the Supreme Court denied their move. They are a part of a bigger opposition organization that sued to overturn the Illinois measure that was passed. Two emergency injunctions seeking a temporary stay of the statewide Illinois rifle mag ban, which is scheduled to go into force in 2024, were denied by the Supreme Court. There have been several requests for the Supreme Court to step in and temporarily halt the application of this law. The Supreme Court, however, decided not to respond to these demands. In the cases of Nag v. Neal and Calkins v. Pritzker, the Protect Illinois Community Act, which places restrictions on illicit arms and ammunition, was challenged in court. Unfortunately, the possibility to register previously owned arms is no longer accessible as the registration period has ended. Therefore, starting in 2024, it will be illegal for anybody to own these items, and doing so will carry serious criminal penalties. The broader ramifications of these legal disputes and their possible effect on law-abiding arm owners' rights have drawn criticism. The Supreme Court's denial of relief in the form of emergency injunctions reflects a complex judicial system in which challenges to restricted arm laws face significant roadblocks. A contentious piece of law, the PICA, has been contested in state and federal courts. The state's lower court ruled that the act violated the American Constitution and was therefore void and unconstitutional. The Illinois State Supreme Court, however, reversed this decision due to concerns over the financial support given to two of the case's justices. In order to seek remedy from the U.S. Supreme Court, the plaintiff filed a petition of certiorari, which was granted. On January 5, the Supreme Court set up a session to discuss the case. In the meantime, the plaintiff in the Calkins case pursued an emergency state request, explicitly addressed to Justice Barrett in anticipation of the Supreme Court's review. In an urgent move, the Supreme Court was asked to seek a stay on PICA, but Justice Barrett turned down Kogan's application and refused to allow the court as a whole to vote on the emergency state request. Really glad that he reaffirmed that our right to keep and bear arms is, is uh, rock solid even here in California. It's not accidental, it's not happenstance. Um, decades ago, we had one of the highest firearm mortality rates, and then we... Um, that this bill would ban weapons that are in common use in the United States today. Uh, your right to own a gun can also be restricted. Their legal analysis is poor, their conclusions are misguided, their outcomes are dangerous. As far as what is required for those to get a permit to carry a concealed weapon here in the state. 
The Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals was still considering an NBank petition, but the NRV case offered a distinctive perspective. In the NRV and Kogan instances, the Supreme Court declined to provide emergency relief, demonstrating a reluctance to take action at this early stage. The challenges that opponents of the Illinois rifle mag restriction have had because of jurisdictional subtleties and legal complexity are brought to light by this most recent order. Recently, Nagger's plea for a writ of injunction awaiting Sertoriari was denied by the Supreme Court, raising interesting questions. The lack of dissenting opinions in any of these denials, including the Kogan case one, complicates the current legal drama. Nagger still has a number of options, one of which is to file an interlocutory writ with the Supreme Court, focusing on the question of whether the preliminary injunction ought to have been granted. If the Calkins case is taken before the federal Supreme Court, it may be submitted to a final evaluation of its merits. The Calkins case was determined on the basis of a move for summary judgment. The FFLV Pritzker case asked Judge McGlynn for a new preliminary injunction in an effort to get around the Seventh Circuit's review and the Supreme Court's previous rejections. Judge McGlynn, however, denied this plea, noting restrictions imposed by earlier rulings made by higher courts. In Illinois, millions of arm owners now risk serious criminal consequences as a result of the recently approved ban on rifles and mags. The Kogan case's resolution on January 5th raises expectations for a careful analysis of the merits and may have an impact on how the Illinois PICA's related legal disputes develop. Developments in Miller v. Bonta Case We need to talk about what is happening in the Miller v. Bonta case, which is a challenge to the state of California's ban on so-called attack weapons. This case was recently argued in front of the Ninth Circuit this last Wednesday at SHOT Show. That was almost a given, especially because of the judges that were on this panel, Judges Burson, NN, and Miller. It did not look good for us. If you listen to the oral arguments, it was very clear that at least Burson and NN were not going to side with us. Judge Miller also seemed inclined to do something that, again, was not going to be in our favor. As you may recall, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals recently granted California's request for an emergency administrative stay, which was against the injunction we received by Judge Benitez against this ban on so-called attack weapons in California. But now that stay, which was issued by that motions panel, is going to remain in place for the foreseeable future because of what the Ninth Circuit panel just did in the order that they issued after the oral arguments. The Ninth Circuit panel in the Miller case has now put Miller on hold, essentially for the foreseeable future, until the Ninth Circuit and Bank panel issues their ruling in the other case that deals with California, the Duncan v. Bonta California mag ban case. The issue with this new order in Miller is the fact that it is built on a prior decision by the Ninth Circuit and Bank panel to take the mag ban case as a comeback case. That is reason for hope. Is it the most robust, far-reaching gun law in the history of the world? It is not. And save lives, not only in California, but across this nation. And one of the lowest firearm mortality rates in the nation. And those things go hand in hand. The legislature can pass whatever it wants. It's just not going to stand up once it gets into the court. California is across this state safe. Uh, I'm proud to stand with you. I'm honored to fight with you. I thank you for being here today. It is no doubt a setback for the safety of Americans. It also affirmed the rights that states maintain. That decision by the Ninth Circuit and bank panel and Duncan broke multiple rules to essentially make that happen. Currently, that aspect of the process is being briefed and challenged in Duncan on whether or not the Ninth Circuit and bank panel could even do that. Did they even have the power to do that? That also means that there is a small but unlikely chance that the Ninth Circuit and Bank panel could rule this year that they didn't even have the power to hear the Duncan case as a comeback case. They could ultimately kick that case back down to the lower court for re-review. That would also mean that Miller, right now being put on hold for Duncan and waiting for the Duncan case to be resolved, would ultimately mean that this was all just a big waste of time. The Miller case was put on hold Duncan could be kicked back down because it shouldn't have gone on Bonn, and then Miller would need to get restarted. All this hold, all this delay was improper. Court's decision to put case on hold. 
However, after hearing the arguments in Miller, the three judges really did not understand this issue and automatically assumed the position of essentially putting this case on hold, which is exactly what they did. Not saying that if they had issued a decision on Miller's merits, it would not have been favorable, and they probably wouldn't rule in our favor, but the strategy they're using right now is to simply put this case on hold. The court's order, issued by Judges Miller and Berenson, states that this case shall be held in abeyance, and submission is withdrawn pending resolution of Duncan v. Bonta. The state entered on October 28, 2023, shall pending further order from the court. For those who are unaware, Miller v. Bonta is a challenge to California's ban on so-called attack weapons under California Penal Code Section 3515. The state of California prohibits different types of arms based on their characteristics, such as something like a semi-auto center fire rifle or something like an AR-15, with a detachable mag that cannot have a flash hider, a collapsible stock, or even a forward vertical grip. If it does have any of those features, it is classified as a so-called attack weapon. Is slamming a federal judge's ruling that overturns the state's three-decade-old ban on assault weapons. Uh, certainly, there will be more people who are not law-abiding and more dangerous who will get a CCW who can commit a crime. It is preventing the next mass shooting, and it is critical to cut off the easy access to these weapons of war. Some Illinois gun owners wonder what will enforcement look like. Officials here with Illinois State Police say... Also, this bill was written with constitutionality in mind, so I definitely had a good feeling. Giving the California Attorney General time to appeal. Adriana. So when you say you won't comply, does that mean you won't register your gun with? That is correct. I have no intention of registering anything. Judge Roger T. Benitez heard the Miller case years ago in a lesser court in a Southern District Court. After reviewing the case's merits, he finally decided in our favor. The state of California appealed the play's decision up to the Ninth Circuit, which granted the appeal but put the Miller case on hold. The play granted a motion for summary judgment striking down this law, and he used something prior to Bruin, which was text as informed by relevant history and tradition. Complex journey and links to Duncan case. Miller sat with a bunch of other cases that were backlogged because of the Supreme Court reviewing the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin case. After the Supreme Court issued that Bruin decision, all these other cases got moving, and eventually Miller was sent back down to Judge Benitez for him to reconsider the case in light of Bruin. Surprise, surprise, nothing changed. All Judge Benitez did was make his decision even stronger, and now he had Bruin to support his position. However, he put a 10-day stay on that new decision so California could appeal up to the Ninth Circuit, and that's exactly what they did. They filed an appeal and also sought an emergency motion for a stay pending appeal. The panel that reviewed that emergency order ended up granting California's request for a stay, but also expedited review of this Miller case in the Ninth Circuit. In that order, the Ninth Circuit motions panel said that they were going to grant this stay in Miller based on the stay that was granted in the Duncan case by the Ninth Circuit and Bank panel. So, they are going to link these cases together. That's exactly what they're doing right now. However, they try to win over people by saying, don't worry, we're also going to expedite review in the Miller case by making a decision that hurts the very people that we're trying to help. The Illinois Supreme Court on the assault weapons ban. This morning, the court ruled the ban is constitutional. And so I'm just grateful for the uh, Illinois Supreme Court um, following along with precedent and doing the right thing. Plans to fight back. Attorney General Rob Bonta tweeted, weapons of war don't belong on our streets. Less capable to handle violence and a firearm is the great equalizer. The ban also faces legal challenges in federal court. Lisa, this definitely means changes are coming in California. But when all this came to a head, essentially all this led to was an expedited review in the Miller case, which simply meant they fast-tracked the review of this case to then put it on hold. The en banc panel essentially bent all the rules to take the Duncan case back as a comeback case and then issued a stay on the Benitez Magban decision. When the Ninth Circuit did this, there were judges like Judge Nelson, Van Deek, and Bum that pointed out how the N-Bank panel was going to break their rules, and they exactly did break their rules. 
Now, because of all the backlash from the judges in the Ninth Circuit and all the people seeing what the Ninth Circuit was doing, they did request briefs on whether or not they actually had the authority to do that. So, right now, there are briefs being submitted to the Ninth Circuit in the Duncan case on whether or not the Duncan case should even be in front of them and whether or not they even have that authority. There is also a chance that in the Duncan case, ultimately when all is said and done, the NBank panel there could hear oral arguments or review the briefs and say, you know what, you're right, we don't have the authority to do this, and then kick it back down. But then that would mean Miller being put on hold for Duncan would also be pretty ridiculous, considering the fact that Duncan right now has a huge question mark about whether or not the NBank panel can actually be reviewing this case. You can see how this has become a huge cluster. Biased Views and Technical Ignorance Listening to the recent oral arguments in the Miller case, it was evident how biased Judges Brennan and Winston were against the Second Amendment. They repeatedly referred to AR-15s as mash guns, and at one point, we believe Judge Brennan called them an A-15. As a result, they lack any technical knowledge about arms and are unaware of the issues raised in this case. Additionally, they are ignorant of what these arms are and why they are there. Judges Brennan and Winston stated multiple times that the common use test outlined in Heller and Bruin is circular, so they were pretty much pushing back against the Supreme Court themselves, saying that under Heller, under Bruin, the common use test is circular and should not be used. Uh, be law-abiding and uh, not commit crimes, uh, but the data does show that those with CCWs. Rights advocates say this is a victory, while many Democratic state leaders see this as a mistake. Fight for the safety of Californians and take common sense steps that we know will will save lives. When it comes to the courts, when it comes to a Republican-led House right now. Nobody can seriously argue that you have to have this kind of a weapon for self-defense. Assault weapons ban will remain law in Illinois, at least for now. Still, assault-style weapons in the state. The assault weapons ban passed both chambers at the tail end of the lame duck session. And our Judge Winston even went so far as to challenge the statistics that there are millions of AR-15s and other semi-auto rifles in the possession of millions and millions of arm owners across the nation. In fact, at one point, Judge Winston even put forward arguments on her own that maybe the number should be looked at only for those arms that are possessed in California. It's very interesting. They were pushing back heavily against the common use test. All in all, it was very clear to me and everyone else who listened to the Miller oral arguments that not only are these judges in Miller not going to faithfully apply Heller and Bruin, even when they decide this case, but right now, they're just not going to want to deal with this case at all, and that's exactly what they did. Anticipated Outcome SHOT Show asked several times about what would happen in the Miller case. There were many lines of questions about putting this case on hold, and that just meant that's what they were going to do, and that's what they did. Now, all eyes will be on the Duncan, California Magban case, which is in the Ninth Circuit in front of the NBank panel. These cases will be linked together going forward, and the current schedule for the Duncan case is that it will be heard the week of March 18. After that, we will essentially have to wait to find out the decision of the Ninth Circuit NBank panel. We don't even think we need to hear the arguments, since, as you may recall, this same 11-judge panel heard the Duncan case earlier and upheld the California MAG prohibition. So we don't think anything will change. The ruling won't be favorable. Bruin because the Ninth Circuit, all these judges, a bunch of judges on the Ninth Circuit, are not faithfully applying what the Supreme Court said in Bruin. The Ninth Circuit is one of the most overturned courts. They do not like the Second Amendment. In California, we're prepared to act every time. And Frank, we don't want to, we're not reacting. We're, we're proactive. I think that that is one of the big things that this Supreme Court decision does is it protects the rights. This ban has faced significant criticism from gun rights advocates and many county sheriffs. Making a life decision to, to change from being a non-gun owner to a gun owner. Judge Benitez's ruling won't go into effect for another 30 days. The high court found that the ban does not violate constitutional rights. They have not really ever upheld Second Amendment cases. They've especially at the NBank panel level, have not ruled in our favor ever in a 2A case. So we don't think anything is going to change in this case. And ultimately, Duncan is going to have to make its way back up to the Supreme Court, which means likely the Miller case is going to sit on hold for a very long time 
waiting for the Duncan case to be resolved. We want to make everyone aware of what's going on. This is going to be significant. Miller is probably going to be on hold for a very long time. Not great news, but that is what's happening in Miller. That's all for this. See you next time.